Hey guys, Steve here, and last time we completed a run of Pokemon Blue with only a Venomoth. This run is going to be Primeape. Yes, that's right, everyone's favorite ball of rage. Primeape is an interesting Pokemon. You can't obtain it in Blue version without trades, so only about half of players really get to even try this Pokemon. If you did play Red version, it would have been a great Pokemon if you could learn a fighting move early for Brock. Alas, it doesn't learn a good fighting move, and since the fighting dojo gives Hitmonchan a Hitmonlee, Primate doesn't see a lot of love. The rules are going to be the same as they always are. They will be located in the description section of this video, or pause the screen if you'd like to see them. Only two Easter eggs were located in the last video. This video will have three. Here are the comments that found Easter eggs from the last video. I am writing the script after the run. Please try and guess in the comment section how quickly I'll be able to beat the game and what parts you think will be the hardest. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on future videos. If you want to help this channel grow, please comment P1 Grand Prix Champion for the YouTube algorithm. First off, we're going to start the game by grabbing our level 5 Primeape and replacing Squirtle with the Universal Pokemon Randomizer to make sure that Champ has a Venusaur. At the very best, we can learn Dig, which is neutrally effective against it. I give it the nickname Jackie, as a nod to Jackie Chan. Most people nickname Hitmonchan Jackie, but Jackie Chan is a master of martial arts and would be a good name for any fighting type. I set Game Hook to give Primate perfect DVs before starting. The first champ battle is a really easy one. With a Pokemon like Primate, Karate Chop will always crit. Karate Chop is a move known as a high crit rate move. All the high crit rate moves in Gen 1 are Crab Hammer, Karate Chop, Razor Leaf, and Slash. A high crit rate move is calculated with this formula on its chance to crit. If you are wondering, if base speed equals 64, then the answer is over 1, which means 100% chance to crit. Now, as any Pokemon that has only normal moves available to it, Brock will require some training. Generally, the process is to pick a level and then go for a chance at Brock. The level usually sits around 13 to 20 when you have only tackle. We have a guaranteed crit move and a defensive drop move, so I have a sneaking suspicion that maybe it wouldn't take too many levels to get the win. Geodude is first, and from our new display you can tell that Karate Chop is doing 5 damage at level 10. So Geodude is going to be a 7 hit KO, and every defense curl becomes a free turn. Geodude proves to be more of a challenge than I expected. 3 tackles manage to deal 20 damage to us, so maybe we need some more levels for defense. For Onyx, our first Karate Chop only does 3 damage. Brock then uses his first bide and gives me a chance to use some leers. When Onyx uses his next bide, I then get a chance to reduce his defense even further. After 5 defense drops, I think it's about time that I should consider switching to Fury Swipes. This manages 2 damage a shot, and victory seems possible. Now from here, there isn't much to say, he uses a mixture of Tackle, Bide, and Screech to no avail. If we could manage to hit more than 2 times with Fury Swipes, this would have been easier. But in the end, victory comes swiftly and we make it through Brock with a really unusually low level. As we make it through Mount Moon, I make sure to pick up Mega Punch. Not really for the increased power, because Karate Chop is already just as strong and more accurate. However, this move will give us enough PP to make it through Rival 2 and Nugget Bridge without healing. As I make it through Mount Moon, I heard a strange sound. I make my way toward this sound. It's coming from the Helix Fossil. It's saying, please like, subscribe, and comment P1 Grand Prix Champion. It sounds like sound logic, but I need to work my way towards Champ 2. During this battle, it's very apparent that our Pokemon is far superior to his. I start out with some Mega Punches, but after being hit with Sand Attack, I make sure to switch to the more accurate Karate Chop. For Pidgeotto, you can see Karate Chop did 23 damage, and Mega Punch did 21 damage. The damage is so close that it's clear that the range will probably be more of a factor in which move will deal more damage. Anyways, by now, Champ 2 has been defeated with relative ease. Now honestly, I probably should have picked up Dig before the Misty battle, but I didn't expect much of a challenge. Especially since she has a knack of using X Defend, and Karate Chop will ignore the increased defense. Our first Karate Chop nearly one-shot Staryu, and the following tackle does very little. Being fast is just fantastic. Starmie does a decent amount of damage with Bubble Beam, but even with this worst case scenario, there's still no way we lose this. You would think a Pokemon with Mediocre Special wouldn't take that hit very well, but Jackie did a really good job. I then make sure to grab and teach Dig right away. After that, we make our way through the SSM and grab another very important move in Body Slam, then teach it right away. Now it's time to make our way towards Champ 3 and give him another butt whooping. Champ 3 is typically very easy or difficult based almost solely on if the Pokemon you are playing can either learn Dig or Body Slam. Today, we can learn both. In this battle, I get hit with a Sand Attack and it really doesn't affect the outcome much. Basically a one-shot or a two-shot of every Pokemon and we make our way towards Surge. 
At this time, I realized I forgot to catch a Pokemon to teach Cut. I then catch a Diglett and realize that it doesn't learn Cut, so I head back and pick up a Sandshrew. This took nearly a whole minute to do, so that's room for improvement on run number 2 already. Did you guys know that electric types have one weakness? Yeah, and the game gives you the best move to take advantage of this weakness just mere minutes ago. That type is ground, and the move is dig. Surge has given very fast Pokemon to at least get a shot in before you go underground. Primeape, however, is just a speed demon and outspeeds all of Surge's Pokemon. I didn't even bother to heal and one-shot all of his Pokemon. Pikachu managed to get a hit in thanks to a quick attack, but that isn't enough. Thanks to Dig, the exploding hiker wasn't any sort of issue either. After arriving in Celadon, I make sure to teach Rock Slide. After that, I then teach Thunderbolt and place a Karate Chop to finish off the moveset and get myself some really good coverage. As a highly offensive Pokemon that doesn't learn any badge boosting moves, it's important to have moves that complement the Pokemon's strengths. Three powerful attack moves and one powerful special move, mostly for Gyarados, is great coverage for the rest of the game. With our new and improved moveset, it's time to breeze through Champ 4. Other than not using Rock Slide on Pidgeotto, I think that Champ 4 battle couldn't have been any easier. I really like playing Pokemon that are fast, with coverage. Everything to this point has been a breeze for us, but that won't last forever. If you aren't using a Mono Psychic Pokemon, you will almost certainly run to a snag somewhere. As we finish up with the Pokemon Tower, I figured that we had probably accumulated enough levels to make up for the lack of type coverage for Erika. Statistically, Dig is our best move to use. Victory Bell gets a Razor Leaf in before going down. Now it's discouraging to see just how much damage our attacks are doing to these Pokemon. Extra levels probably won't even be enough to ever one-shot these Pokemon. Just like Victory Bell, Vileplume survives our Dig and then lands a Sleep Powder. Just to be a tease, she uses two very weak Mega Drains, followed up by us waking up, but then Petal Dance finishes us off. On the next attempt, Victory Bell puts us to sleep, and Razor Leaf finishes us off. On the following attempt, we make it to Vile Plume again with rather low HP, but then she misses a Poison Powder and our worries are over, costing only two resets. Following the badge, we head to Cycling Road to pick up the rare candy in the grass and the PP up to the right side near the biker. Then, in the Safari Zone, we grab the Carbos on the rocks, Protein to the north, and then the prized surf. On my rush towards Koga and how I destroyed the three drowsy guy, I went into the drowsy hypno guy with confidence that my speed and dig will get me through. However, I forgot the cardinal rule of having a psychic weakness, save in front of strong psychic type Pokemon. I don't finish off either drowsy or hypno in one hit and take a confusion from both, and it results in my loss. As you can probably imagine from my rant, I didn't save and were sent all the way back to Erica. On the bright side, I beat her again, but then proceed to waste minutes 36 through 40 repeating everything until we get back to the point again. After that painstaking process, I then take on Drowsy Hypno Guy once again, and this attempt goes basically the same as the previous attempt. On the very next attempt, it almost goes the same way, but the Drowsy doesn't get a chance to hit me with a confusion thanks to an extra swap out. In fact, this attempt has three swap outs basically giving me enough time to hit with enough digs to get the win, but only by a small margin. Koga has all poison types. However, they're all defensively bulky, so Dig is a good move, but not the best. Honestly, except for Alakazam, I can't remember the last time any Pokemon was able to one-shot either Muk or Weezing. Muk has three bad moves, and luckily he goes for Disable twice. Weezing, on the other hand, is always a challenge for a Pokemon with either low HP or low defense. Koga is known for using X attacks, so sometimes Weezing will take a hit or two and then self-destruct to take out any Pokemon. But Luck is on our side, and he only uses Toxic, and we make our way through the tricky Koga. Now's about the time I'd like to do my creator shoutout. Today's creator shoutout is Gym Leader Matt. He does very similar runs to mine, but maxes out a Pokemon's potential by basing it on game time. He also has a series where he plays future Pokemon in Pokemon Red to see how they would do. It's incredibly fascinating. It's not entirely the same game, but badge boosts and most other quirks still exist. Here's a short click of one of his more recent videos that I absolutely loved. This can get a little easier. I'd like to introduce you guys to the hardest trainer in the entire game. Don't laugh, but this last with the three Pidgeys gave me the hardest time and this is where I reset the most. Since ground doesn't affect flying types, it means we once again have to rely on Sonic Boom and the good lord gave each of these Pidgeys just enough HP to barely survive two Sonic Booms and take a third to knock it out. Let me just say it makes me very happy that these 
these PGs have exactly 41 health and that they like to use sand attack. And I'm only going to show this one failed attempt because I refuse to give this last more screen time. But just know that I had four resets here and it was very frustrating. Now back to the run. About now we make our way to the most difficult champ battle for most runs. But today we have the coverage to take care of his team pretty easily. Pidgeot doesn't have Sky Attack yet, so it's not much of a threat. Oddly enough, Primeape can learn Thunderbolt, and Gyarados is four times weak to electric moves. It does survive showing our mortality, but it only has one good move right now. Dig, Rock Slide, or Earthquake usually can take out Growlithe quite easily. Until it evolves in the champion battle, the defense is just really low. Alakazam is currently underleveled, as I still outspeed it and take advantage of its abysmal defenses. However, I have a sneaking suspicion that without a powerful attacking stab move, it could be much of an issue later. Venusaur, although we don't have a good move for it, it also doesn't have a good move that we're weak against. So assuming we can get to it with more than half HP, we should be fine the whole way through. Giovanni is still not a challenge in this run, so we make our way towards Sabrina next. Before then, I make sure to pick up Mimic for later. Everybody knows that Sabrina really only has one threat on her team. Kadabra, Mr. Mime, and Venomoth aren't too threatening. Although, because of good AI, Mr. Mime can sometimes pick Confusion over its other psychic moves. Also, Venomoth will always pick Psybeam, so I won't make it to Alakazam with full HP. I then use Dig, and Alakazam has two-thirds chance of picking a move that will do a ton of damage to me. It picks Psybeam, and we go down quite easily. On the next attempt, I make it with full HP. However, Alakazam once again picks Psybeam, and we won't even learn if we can survive because of a crit. On the following attempt, I switched to using Body Slam. I did this for a chance of paralysis, and it absolutely worked. But more importantly, Alakazam couldn't attack for the turn, and I got the win. Man, this scares me for the upcoming champ battles. His Alakazam will be even better than this one. With Sabrina defeated, I then make my way to pick up strength. I then pick up the rare candy in his house, the calcium on the second floor of the mansion, iron on the third floor, carbos in the basement, rare candy to the left of the final button, and last rare candy hidden to the top left of the room. Blaine is next and he's one of those trainers that Dig can just destroy. Growlithe is just terrible, it's too bad that it's not level 50, then it would have Flamethrower and be much more of a challenge. Ponyta again doesn't have a great moveset, but thanks to a Gen 1 miss on Dig, he gets to use Stomp before taking us out. Rapidash can be a challenge for a lot of grass and bug Pokemon, but not because Rapidash is strong, but because it's fast and has Fire Spin. Fire Spin traps the opponent and skips their attack if it's faster than you. 99 speed is pretty good, but Primeape is just absurdly fast. You'll be hard pressed to find a Pokemon that can take down Arcanine in a single hit without some sort of setup first. As expected, it survives our dig but only gets to use an Ember before going down to our next dig. Fire Blast probably would have been close, but I think we would have survived that hit too. I then make my way up north to Giovanni and face his ragtag team of strong Pokemon that are played very poorly. Giovanni is the last of the gym leaders, and he starts out with the ever so weak Rhyhorn. Generally from this point on in the game, you have a move to deal with a rock ground type. Those moves are usually Surf, Psychic, Mega Drain, or Dig. Dig is the one Rhyhorn has the most chance of surviving because its defense is much better than its special. Dugtrio is a Pokemon known for speed, but not much else. Its defense is much less than desirable, and Body Slam is more than capable of dealing with it. Nidoqueen is a fierce defensive Pokemon, and most Pokemon don't take care of it in a single hit without setup. I also don't, and finish it off with a Body Slam. The following Nidoking is the same as Nidoqueen, but trades some defensive stats for offensive stats. We then use the same tactics to take care of it too. Rhydon is the same as Rhyhorn, but with more of everything. However, this Rhydon is unique, as it has two automatic one-shot moves, but those moves fail if you're slower than the opponent. Not only are we faster, but we're nearly three times faster and the victory is ours. A short walk over to the west is Champ 6. Pidgeot is first and Rock Slide is still doing slightly more than half. Wing Attack is now starting to pack a punch despite its low power. The next Rock Slide takes it down. Rhyhorn is next and I click up only one time and accidentally use Body Slam. I'm not expecting a one shot with Dig because of Giovanni, but I'm not punished as the next Dig then crits and finishes it off. Gyarados is next, and for some reason, I use Rock Slide. It's still a super effective move, but not four times effective like Thunderbolt is. Hydro Pump then hits us and brings us down to one. I have to either be super lucky at this point, or I'm going to lose. Growlithe goes down to a single dig as expected until it evolves. Alakazam is next, and as expected, Dig still doesn't take it out, and it finishes us off with Psybeam. 
On the next attempt, Dig once again doesn't take out Alakazam, and Psychic finishes us off. On the following attempt, we arrive with much more HP, and Dig gets a better range, but Psychic still finishes us off, no problem. On the very next attempt, I use 5 rare candies, and try again. Dig still doesn't get the KO, and Psychic finishes us off from 119. On the next attempt, I use every rare candy I have, and Dig still doesn't get us the win. As you can see, my HP is nearly maxed, so all the ranges on the earlier Pokemon have mostly been solved, but Psychic gets a crit and takes us out. This next attempt, however, things are a little weird. I again go for a dig and hope that the last attack was a bad range. But then he uses Reflect, and we do even less damage. But he then uses Reflect again and allows us to use another dig. Seeing as it's at 62 out of 123, it's 1 HP over half. But the next attack then gets a high side of the range and finishes it off. Venusaur isn't much of an issue as long as it lays off Razor Leaf. Dig gets a decent crit and we're only one attack from finishing it off. He then uses Poison Powder and we're destined for this win. The Champion's Pokemon have a significant improvement over this battle so I'm very worried about the final battle. Before we make it to Lorelei, I'm going to switch over to Live Steve for the trek through Victory Road. Boy, 11 resets though is really high for Primate, but to be fair, I think all fighting types have a handicap in this game because there are so many alloc- there's just so many Alakazams. I am so stupid. That's going in the that's Why am I so bad at this game? Yep, that's right. Parasect finished us off. Of course I picked the worst move, as Dig is only one-fourth effective against it, and Rock Slide would have been double effective. Regardless, the Poison Powder would have caught up with us anyways. Once back at Champ 6 again, I lost to Venusaur's Razor Leaf. Then lose to another Alakazam Psychic. But on the third attempt, I got a crit on Alakazam with Dig. You'd really think that that would happen more often by now. Venusaur then takes three digs and goes down without too much hassle. If I had, let's say, survived an Alakazam Psybeam, then Razor Leaf would have finished us off. Okay, now we finally reached the league. A lot slower than expected, but at least we made it. Lorelei starts with Dugong, and thanks to what we learned from the Kangaskhan run, it's better to use the move that relies on our strength more. Our attack is better than our special, so Rock Slide is the better move here. We get a crit, and I don't know how much damage we would have done normally. Cloyster is double as defensive as it is special defensive, so Thunderbolt is the way to go here. Cloyster uses an Aurora Beam, which isn't that bad, but it leads to an attack drop. Just look at the bottom left there. That hurt us a lot. The next Thunderbolt then finishes it off. With Slowbro, I'm not sure what I was thinking going for Body Slam. After the first attack though, I realized my mistake. After a few amnesias, I also realized that it's considered a psychic move, so she was actually never going to attack me anyways. For Jinx, Rock Slide will be an easy one-hit KO. What? That attack drop really sucks. That ice punch then really hurts. After we get through Jinx, Rock Slide then does about a third, and Lapras finishes us off with a blizzard. On the very next attempt, we make it back with full HP. Rock Slide then hits for a high range for a little more than half. To be fair, last time we had an attack drop. Maybe it wasn't even a range. A poor body slam choice takes us past Lapras. The black belt is typically a joke, but let's take a look. Onyx is of course very weak, and Dig has no problems getting by, but it deals some chip damage, and I started with some damage already. Body Slam then does more than half to hit Monchan. I then swap the Dig, as I know it will do more damage, just in case Body Slam was a high range. But the Black Belt takes advantage of the opportunity, and uses an X Defend while I'm underground. One of the smartest decisions I've ever seen him make, and then it survives the Dig damage, and then does some more chip damage to us. The next attack then finishes it off. With Hitmonlee, I learn from my mistake and go for Dig immediately. Once again, the Black Belt then uses the next defend while I'm underground again. It then survives slightly under half and then hits back with a jump kick and brings me down to scary levels of HP. The next dig then takes care of it. Onyx is three digs, but he bulks up his Onyx to scary levels of defense with an X defend, Harden, and another X defend. With Machamp, I use dig once again and he then uses X defend once again. At this point, I'm wondering if he just X defends on turn one rather than him playing very well. But the smart black belt then uses his one and only attacky move to take me out. How embarrassing. On the following attempt, I make it back to Machamp with low HP once again. 
Hitmonlee had used high jump kick for a ton of damage on this attempt. After the two digs, Machamp once again lands a submission to take us out. On the next attempt, Hitmonchan takes advantage of my body slam technique and finishes me off with a counter. After that attempt, Machamp then uses a submission. We finally survive! After the next dig, he uses another submission and once again lands the very inaccurate move and finishes me off. At this point, I realize since the black belt seems to use X defend every time I use dig, it would be better for me to take the lower damage and go for body slam. On this attempt, I manage to paralyze on the first hit. He then lands the next submission, but thanks to high HP, I survive. The next body slam does another third, but the Machamp is fully paralyzed and I finally get the win against the worst Elite Four member after four losses. Next up is Agatha, and I don't predict this will be any sort of issue. We have a very fast Pokemon, and it knows a ground move, but let's see what happens. Gengar is first, and we outspeed to dig our hole. The dig then lands, and it's a one-shot, maybe thanks to the crit, I don't know. Golbat is next, and it's usually pretty defensive, but we have Rock Slide. Once again, a one-shot, but again, who knows, thanks to that crit maybe. Haunter is next, and the dig one-shots it to no surprise. Arbok, the consensusly agreed weakest Pokemon on our team is next, and again, it's a one-shot. The last Gengar is next, and this one is 4 levels higher, but we still outspeed and we use our dig. It then one-shots, and without a crit, so outside of Golbat, this seems pretty good for consistency testing. Lance is next, and it's another situation where we just don't have the right move for the situation. Let's see how this plays out. Obviously Lance starts with Gyarados, and we use Thunderbolt. It survives, as the power creep has finally caught up, and our bad special is showing. Luckily, a Leer gets us through this first challenge, however, we have an advantage. Since we are weak to Psychic, Lance's dragons will spam agility. Thanks to that, you can see that we make our way through both of them, undamaged with Body Slam. As Aerodactyl comes out, I had to take a moment to realize what move I was going to use. I hover over Thunderbolt, but then remember that Rock is immune to electricity, and then switch to Rock Slide. After a relatively weak takedown, the win is pretty much assured as long as we hit. Rock Slide then misses, and Lance heals to full. Looks like this won't be too easy now, will it? The next Rock Slide then hits, and Lance's second chance gets wasted on a bite. He really should have used Hyper Beam if he wanted a shot of taking me down. Last is Dragonite, and has two Psychic moves, but both don't deal damage. The win is slow, but assured. Last is the Champion, and we're not that much higher of a level than last time. Clearly we're going to be outmatched, but maybe some luck will go our way. First is Pidgeot, and a Rock Slide once again doesn't take it down in one hit. However, a mirror move is pretty good because we have a rock resistance. The next one finishes it off. After the last battle with Champ, I decided that it's better just to use Body Slam on Alakazam. A 30% chance of paralysis could be very useful. Psybeam then hits and very surprisingly we survive the attack and get a chance to get through. That bodes well for getting through the rest of the battle. Rhydon for some reason uses Horn Drill while we take it down with some digs. Gyarados is next and after what happened with Lance, I'm not thrilled at the prospect of taking an attack from it. We get a lucky paralysis on it and it's fully paralyzed. So we get to go through Gyarados with quite a bit of luck on our side. Next is Arcanine, and as I mentioned before, the evolution comes with a massive defense boost. Usually it's enough to survive one hit, but not today as our luck streak continues and a crit takes it down. Last is Venusaur, and as we start our dig, I see the charge of a solar beam and I know this one is over. It doesn't miss, and we go down. Boy, was there a lot of luck involved in that first attempt. It's going to be difficult to make it back there again. Turns out that was true, as the following several attempts all failed by these means. Venusaur once again uses Solar Beam and takes us down from even more HP. Arcanine takes us out with an Ember. Alakazam takes us out with a Psychic. Alakazam hits with a Psy Beam, and we hit ourselves with confusion. That one is really funny. Alakazam once again hits us with Psychic. Alakazam hits us with Psybeam. We manage to land two digs on Venusaur and it survives on a sliver, just to be taken down by a solar beam. The following attempt, the Arcanine burns us, making our attacks even less powerful on Venusaur. Three Body Slams doesn't even manage to do half on Venusaur. Alakazam hits us with a critical hit Psybeam from full HP. Alright, this next attempt is finally a good one and I'll start from the beginning. For Pidgeot, we get hit by a critical hit wing attack before hitting with our second rock slide. For Alakazam, we get a crit with body slam and takes ourselves past the most powerful Pokemon. Rhydon is a simple two digs, as always. It really doesn't have a good track record of using its only damaging move in Fury Attack. Gyarados then misses a Hydro Pump, allowing us to get by without taking any damage. Arcanine is taken care of with a crit dig, so no burn going into Venusaur. I figured that if Venusaur went for Solar Beam, that's when I could start with a dig. So, I opt to use Body Slam first. 
As expected, it goes for Solar Beam, and that's when I start my dig. After the next growth, the win is assured, as it only boosts its special and not its defense. And that makes us the champion of the Pokemon League after quite a grueling first run. We finished the game at level 60 with 119 real time, 341 game time, and 29 resets. Those are pretty bad numbers for a run that felt otherwise really easy. Only one Pokemon could account for most of those resets, and its name is Alakazam. Quite frankly, this is a recurring problem because fighting types have very little special and every champion team uses an Alakazam. You could overlevel and one-shot it, or just hope that it uses bad move, but regardless, it's a real hurdle. I'll do some testing at a lot of the big moments of the run to see what I can do to reduce the time. These moments will include Erika, the Drowsy Hypno Guy, Sabrina, Champ 6, the Black Belt, and the Champion. I have some ideas, and it shouldn't be too hard with a Pokemon that only needs a handful of tweaks to the route instead of trying to think of an entirely new strategy. Because I have such a powerful move like Karate Chop, I figured I would give Champ 1A a shot and see how it goes. But, as you can see, we're at just such a big level disadvantage, the battle isn't even worth it. I then take my first Brock test at level 10. At this level, Karate Chop is doing 4 damage, not nearly the 5 damage we were doing on the first run. Not to let this test drag on, but for the Onyx battle, we're only doing 2 damage and it becomes clear that there's no way I can rely on Karate Chop, especially at this low level. I then come back at level 11 to see how we'll fare. Karate Chop is doing 5 damage now, and we can beat Geodude in a respectable 7 turns. With enough defense curls, our HP will vary entering Onyx. As we enter Onyx, our Karate Chop starts out with 3 damage. Yeah, it's better, but not an amount I can rely on. I then test out our Fury Attack with 3 Leers, and it's still only doing 1 damage. Eventually, Onyx does use another Bide, and I can then use 2 more Leers. The next Fury Attack then does 2 damage in attack, and I'm basically using the same strategy as the first run. There's not much at our disposal to make the fight more consistent. We can win at level 11, and any extra levels would most likely be a waste of our time, and only save a turn or two. The next big thing doesn't come for some time, but as we arrive at Celadon to buy vitamins, I switch from Carbos to Protein. I made this change so that later on I could turn some really close ranges to one-shots. More specifically, the late game Alakazams, but some other Pokemon that will also give us better ranges are the Drowsies and Koga's Gym, along with the Champion's Venusaur. After quite a bit of thought, I realized that I should really consider pushing Erika as late as possible. I figured that after Koga would be a good time. But before then, we have to see how we'll do against the Drowsy Hypno Guy. I added some bikers to the route to compensate for the lower amount of XP we would have at this point. The battle starts out with a dig, but then he switches out to Hypno. Well, I can't rely on this to happen in the real run. But then we hit, and it does more than half. Looks like the extra protein has kicked in. A 2 hit will be much better than a 3 hit. The following Drowsy is still not a one shot, but that's fine I guess. There doesn't seem to be much I can do about that. Let's see if all the training will make Erika any easier. Now I don't expect to be able to one shot anything. That was made clear to me on the first run. However, the thing I can do here is use Body Slam and try to stick luck into the equation. The odds of getting a paralysis and then fully paralyzed in the same turn are very low, but honestly it's the best I can do. Being a higher level I can probably take another hit or two. Even with a Gen 1 miss on Body Slam for Vileplume, I still managed to win. This will probably be fine, it's not like I was losing too badly on the first run. Before we head to Sabrina, I make sure to pick up an extra protein on the 5th floor of Silphco, Calcium on the 7th floor, and also I buy another protein from the Mart. I tried to buy more, but they didn't work this late in the game. Now for Sabrina. The solution to this one was actually quite easy. Instead of fighting her after Sylph, I just had to fight Blaine first. With all those extra levels from the gym trainers under my belt, the ranges should be more favorable. Not to mention, with the badge from Blaine, we will get an extra 12.5% to our special, which might let us survive a Psybeam. I arrive at Sabrina 4 levels higher with some extra vitamins this time. Obviously Kadabra was going to go down to a body slam. It did the first time. Mr. Mime is a toss-up whether you will use a defensive move or confusion. I can't one-shot, so that's the best I can do. The strat for Venomoth has changed. Even though Dig is double effective against Poison, it's resisted by Bug. So Rock Slide is actually the strongest move here. Nothing has changed for Alakazam, but with some more levels, Dig should hopefully one-shot it. Well, she uses Reflect, which doubles the defense. We did one more damage than half, so that seems really good to call it. We even survived a Psybeam, which I wasn't expecting to. The Calcium and the Badge Boost definitely helped. 
By the time everything comes back around to a linear path past Giovanni, we find ourselves three levels higher than the first run. This should hopefully be enough to turn the tides on this battle. Rockslide is surprisingly able to one-shot Pidgeot, when I swear I was doing little more than half last time. Rhyhorn is a nice one-shot. It's really showing just how important those extra levels and vitamins are. With Gyarados, it's not surprising that it's a one-shot with Thunderbolt. That extra calcium along with three more levels combines for nine more special, and that translates to what, like 40 more damage? Growlithe was a one-shot before, and it still is. Now the second biggest moment of this practice is about to happen as we dig on Alakazam. It is enough to finish it off this time, a big weight off my shoulders. Venusaur can do whatever it wants, as it's now only a two-shot instead of three. Let's hope that still happens at the end as well. With that under our belts, it's time to work on the problematic Elite Four members, starting with the Black Belt. Now there's not much to say with Onyx, Dig is really our best shot, and even with our improved stats, it's not a one-shot. After testing out all of our moves, I found out that with Hitmonchan, Thunderbolt was actually the strongest move to use. I'm totally fine with this because it can't be countered and won't give him an extra turn to use X-Defend on himself as well. After much testing, it turns out that maybe he changes his move based on your stats, or maybe I was just absurdly unlucky. But that's about it for changes. Everything else is just digged from here. This was the worst run of approximately 5 attempts, and on Machamp he just refused to use submission or it would miss like you'd normally think it would, so there's not much to say about that. Alright, to keep the video from being too long, I'm going to condense this next part just the stuff I learned over like 20 attempts. Venusaur was just too inconsistent, and I wasn't using Body Slam anymore, so I swapped Body Slam for Mimic. Pidgeot likes to mirror move on turn 1 nearly every time, but if you use Mimic, it won't. So I start with a Rock Slide, then follow it with a Mimic. After that, I don't mind whatever move it decides to use, but if you Mimic on turn 1 and it uses Sky Attack, you lose. Now with Alakazam, after all that attack boosting, I was only able to get Dig to about a 40% chance to one shot. If you combine that with 18% chance to crit, that will have to be good enough. Rhydon is always bad, it was never an issue. Gyarados I was unable to one shot at any point, but this led me to believe that earlier when I bought that one protein for Sabrina, I could probably buy 3 calcium too and that would be good enough to finish off the rest of Gyarados. There's nothing I can do to change Arcanine from being a two shot, but it's not much of a threat other than the chance to burn. Now with Venusaur, the answer was Sky Attack from Pidgeot. I couldn't make this a two shot with Dig, so Sky Attack seemed to be a good choice here. Basically trading one turn from Venusaur for Pidgeot and getting rid of three underground turns. With all that testing done, it's now time to start our second run and see how it goes. I feel like we buffed out a lot of the sticky points, so I should be able to cut off loads of time. I start the second run with a name change. I named the primate Danny DeVito because it kinda resembles him and I thought it was hilarious. The first champ battle is as easy as the last time. For the Brock battle, Geodude is still 7 karate chops that we figured out on the test run. However, Onyx was really not cooperating and wasn't using Bide as much and used Tackle a few too many times and he hands us our first loss. On the very next attempt, I decided that I should take Fade into my own hands. I decided to just use all of the Leers before then switching to Fury Swipes. Thanks to another weird Bide quirk, we are able to continue attacking Onyx even while he has Bide up. Bide will only count the final attack of a multi-move turn, so in this case, Fury Attack is only 2 damage per hit. Eventually, we make our way through, even though it felt pretty bad. For Champ 2, he leads with a first turn Sand Attack. From there, it all goes downhill as we just keep taking hit after hit until eventually going down on Rat Attack. On the very next attempt, we don't get hit with a Sand Attack. As you would expect, a powerful Pokemon can manage to handle some first form Pokemon with ease. Karate Chop on a fast Pokemon is one of the best moves to start with for a consistent result, but it's very nice to have options with Mega Punch as well. Misty is next and Staryu isn't an issue as expected. In my testing, it was supposed to be a one-shot, so that is surprising. Starmie and I apparently share a speed tie, so it hits me with a water gun. But of course, it's a crit. I lose the speed tie once again and hit with a bubble beam crit. Well, it couldn't possibly go that bad once again, so let's run this back again. Staryu is taken out with a one-shot karate chop this time. This Starmie battle is night and day different. For starters, I won every speed tie this time. She uses her patented X Defend on turn 1, which is irrelevant and good for me. Then, a non-critical hit Bubble Beam isn't too bad. Don't worry, we're in the home stretch now. Losing won't be on the menu for quite some time. Champ 3 is even easier this time. We've gained quite a few levels since the last battle, and it really shows. 
I guess the lack of sand attack also contributed to it as well. Nothing has changed for Surge. It's hardly worth showing three digs, but I will for the sake of this video. Nothing outspeeds, so we have no idea if we can survive a Thunderbolt. Next is Champ 4, and our moveset and levels have improved significantly since the last attempt. Spoiler alert, every single Pokemon is a one-shot. It doesn't matter that his team has improved at all. To be fair, I had added Rock Slide, Thunderbolt, and 3 Protein for this battle. You know that his team is incredibly underleveled when even Ivysaur is a one-shot. Next up is the Drowsy Hypno Trainer. We start off with a dig for massive damage, but of course, Drowsy then goes for its most powerful attack and very nearly takes us out on its own. On the next dig, he then swaps out to Hypno and it takes about half damage. The deciding moment is coming up and it's Disable. So this one should be won from here thanks to my extremely high speed. With that threat being taken care of, it's time to face the much less threatening Koga. I don't think anyone will be surprised that this battle went just exactly as the same as the last battle. The one shots are still one shots, and the two shots are still two shots. The big kicker at the end is if Weezing will use self destruct or not. The deciding moment comes up, and he doesn't use self destruct. Next up is Erica. This one is a toss up. We leveled up a few times to increase our defense a bit. Victory Bell tries a Sleep Powder, but thanks to a lucky fail, one big obstacle is taken care of. However, our brutal speed works its way in as Vileplume comes up. We just get a crit and take care of the second threat. Since we've prepared ahead of time, I don't expect Champ 5 to be much of a threat this time around either. Rock Slide is still a one-shot on Pidgeot. Thunderbolt doesn't one-shot Gyarados, but to be fair, we don't have Blaine's Badge Boost for special yet. As we learn in the test, even one extra special makes a big difference when it comes to a 4 times weakness. Growlithe was never a threat at any point. After the extra levels in Pro Team, we're able to one-shot the Alakazam without issue. Venusaur is of course the problem that it always is. This is the reason why I picked Venusaur, because despite all the extra stats we've accumulated in this playthrough, it still won't get any better than a 3-shot. Then we speed our way through Blaine, and as you'd expect, this won't be an issue, just like last time. But the important thing is that we get some extremely easy training done on his trainers, really helping us gain those extra levels for Sabrina and Rival 6. But anyways, back to Blaine. He still doesn't get to attack until Arcanine, and even then, he still only uses Roar. We put off Sabrina as late as humanly possible, but now we've got extra levels and the special badge boost on our side, so there's a chance we could survive psychic attacks a little bit better. This Sabrina battle is a doozy. Kadabra and Mr. Mime aren't an issue when it comes to Venomoth, one mistake carries on to have further ramifications. Instead of using a better rock slide, I use Dig. Then, as we explained, Venomoth will only use Psybeam, but then we get confused. I think you see where this is going. Dig is a two-turn move, so that hurts our chances at victory. With Alakazam, our first attack then hits herself, and then she sets up a reflect. On our next attack, Dig then does about half, and she gets a chance for a knockout, but then only uses reflect again, and we get a very undeserved victory. Giovanni once again is almost exactly the same as the first run. I do one-shot the Rhyhorn, unlike the first run. However, I didn't one-shot the Dugtrio, and it uses a slash. But anyways, the Nidos aren't one-shot either, but typical Giovanni uses Guard Spec both times he was actually able to attack me. Rhydon once again doesn't use its one and only damaging move either. Man, Blue Version's Giovanni is just so bad. After this, I figured this was the best time to make a trip to the Celadon Mart and buy 5 Calcium to make sure I one-shot that final Gyarados. I was only able to use 4 of them, but that should be a good sign. It's time to face one of the most headache-inducing trainers for this run. Champ 6 starts with his usual Pidgeot, and we of course start with a Rock Slide. The attack then crits, and I'm pretty sure that mattered. Thanks to how much damage we did to Giovanni's Rhyhorn, I'm quite sure I'll be able to one-shot this Rhyhorn. And I do! Gyarados is the real test, and with an improved special, we're able to one-shot it with Thunderbolt. It's nice to know that the improvement did help. Ralph is, of course, still a one-shot. I can't believe he's still using Growlithe. It's not like he needs to wait to evolve it. Another big move is upon us, and we use Dig on Alakazam. But the attack then crits, and we won't see if it mattered. I assume the crit didn't matter, because our plan should hopefully one-shot the final one, which isn't too far away. Venusaur isn't too bad, as it only gets a Razor Leaf off before going down to two digs. Honestly, Venusaur is never really a threat, but 
Venusaur usually takes us out because of chip damage from Alakazam or Gyarados, so it's nice to know that those problems are taken care of. Lorelei is next, and she seemed like a relatively easy battle as long as you pick the right moves. Dugong is first, and our Rock Slide finally misses, but she just uses a useless rest. That's because rest is classified as a psychic move, and therefore super effective against us. The next rock slide seems to be doing slightly more than two thirds. This should be easy to take it out while it's sleeping now, but a crit speeds things up. With Cloyster, Thunderbolt is doing noticeably more damage. However, the important thing here to note is that she is now at super potion range, so we don't have to take a single hit from Cloyster. As mentioned before, Slowbro will only use Amnesia because of the Psychic typing, so slowly but surely we will take it out with Thunderbolt. Jinx is just a Rock Slide, and without the attack drop, there was never a doubt that it would go down. For Lapras, Rock Slide then does more than half, making this a two-shot. But Lapras uses Body Slam, and then causes Paralysis, that drops my speed below Lapras. Lapras then uses Confuse Ray to really drive me crazy, and of course we hit ourselves. But thankfully, the confusion wears off immediately, and the Rock Slide then finishes it off. Alright, it's Black Belt time. Onyx is first, and the Dig almost knocks it out in a single hit. He then uses Rage, because why not? Hitmonchan, we discovered that Thunderbolt was better against the Punching Fiend. Of course, it's almost a one-shot, but an X-Defend gets us through. For Hitmonlee, there's not much we can do to stop it from using its famous kick attacks. Our first dig almost takes it out, but it then fires back with a jump kick. Of course it's a crit. Why wouldn't it? The next Onyx isn't a threat in any way. Machamp is next, and our first dig is a crit. It's quite surprising that it wasn't a knockout on its own. Of course, in our test, the Black Belt was an idiot. But today, he was being coached or something because he went for a submission, and it of course landed to give us our first reset since Misty. On the very next attempt, the Hitmonlee was a one-shot with Dig, so we arrived at Machamp with nearly full HP. Our first Dig does less than half. Machamp then uses a submission again successfully, and it tells me that if Hitmonlee didn't crit, we probably would have had a good chance of surviving that attack and winning. But anyways, the recoil damage puts it in range for Dig to finish it off the next turn. Agatha once again is slower than my Pokemon. Dig and Rock Slide are more than enough to take out every member of her team with ease. I mean, on the first run, we were able to take out all of her Pokemon with relative ease, despite being three levels lower than we are now. So, with the extra protein and extra levels, this really wasn't going to be a competition at all. We didn't need the extra speed from the Carbos in the first run. So, we're moving on to Lance next. Gyarados is next, and we're once again able to one-shot it with Thunderbolt. Now, as I've mentioned before, his dragons will only spam agility and therefore not attack back. So, I just spam Body Slam since I'm going to get rid of it anyways. Aerodactyl comes out, and a Rock Slide of course doesn't take it out. He then uses Hyper Beam, and my fears were confirmed. It does about 80 damage. We're three levels higher than last time, so if he had used Hyper Beam instead of Bite in the first run, we probably would have lost. But that's about it for Lance, because Dragonite can't attack back either. So now it's time for the battle we've all been waiting for. Will our preparation help us get through the champion battle in good time? Who knows? We start off on a good foot as Rock Slide hits Pidgeot for a crit. But there goes our Mimic strat we discussed earlier. On Alakazam, we go for Dig to see if we can finally one-shot it. But of course, he goes for Reflect, and our damage is cut in half. Then, we take a relatively weak Psybeam, so at least the Calcium helped there. The next Dig then doesn't take care of Alakazam, and he takes us out. Okay, some bad luck there, but let's try this again. We use a Rock Slide on Pidgeot, but then he charges up with an unexpected Sky Attack. It's supposed to use Mirror Move, what the heck happened? I'm forced to use Rock Slide again, but a miss forces us to take the large Sky Attack damage. I then use Mimic because the battle is basically over and Pidgeot then uses Wing Attack to take us out. On the following attempt, we use Rock Slide and Pidgeot again decides not to follow the pattern and uses Sky Attack again. This time, I decide not to use the less accurate Rock Slide and use Thunderbolt. I guess we're going to have to beat Venusaur the old-fashioned way. Alakazam finally cooperates and doesn't reflect before our dig then goes off. Ouch! So close. That sucks. What sucks even more is the psychic we took right afterwards. Eventually, we make it through Alakazam. Rhydon, we of course establish, is absurdly weak and can't really do anything to us. Gyarados is then a one-shot, but thanks to a crit. All that extra calcium doesn't even help the spot I wanted it to. At least it helped us survive a psychic. Arcanine, we use a dig, but it then survives. It then misses the following takedown, and we take advantage of the opportunity to knock it out. 
We then use Dig on Venusaur, and it does less than half, as expected. But Venusaur then uses Razor Leaf and takes us out instead of a Solar Beam. Well, this isn't going as expected, and Pidgeot is ruining my well thought out strategy. On the next attempt, Pidgeot then charges up a Sky Attack after Rock Slide once again. Whatever. Just get it out of my sight. Clearly I've done something to mess with the AI. Alakazam then comes out, and Dig then goes off, and he doesn't use a Reflect. Luck finally favors us, as it was a range, as we suspected, and go on to Rhydon with full HP. Rhydon then powers us up with a Leer before then going down. This extra attack actually might help out on the Venusaur. Gyarados is then an easy one-shot thanks to our extra special from Rhydon. Arcanine is then a one-shot, and it turns out Leer was the strategy I never tested the entire time. It's too bad I didn't discover this during the testing. Venusaur then takes our dig, and it's a crit. Well, it turns out the Leer didn't matter, but it was still helpful to get to this point. He then uses Razor Leaf, and we actually have HP to absorb the blow. So the next dig hits, and that makes us the champion of the Pokemon League once again. We finish the game at level 63, with 58 real time, 342 game time, and 7 resets. Now the ending there didn't exactly go according to plan, but I'm still satisfied with that run. If I really wanted to reduce some more time, I could arrive at a higher level, but that's probably as good as it's going to get. As far as the rankings are concerned, certainly Primeape was much better than Venomoth. It is still able to consistently perform better than Electabuzz, and with a better time. Although, if I let Kangaskhan train up to level 63, maybe it would have performed even better than it did. It feels like right behind Kangaskhan in the S tier feels like a pretty good spot for it. Ironically, the thing holding back Primeape is its unfortunate fighting typing. It doesn't get the benefit of any fighting moves that help. To be honest, there really aren't very many good things the fighting typing is good for in Gen 1. There's just so many mandatory Alakazams that you have to face that it's always going to be a hindrance. But regardless, I'm still happy with the performance, and I really liked playing with Primeape. I think it's a lot better than I expected going into the run. Thanks to the comments on my previous videos, I have chosen to do Lapras next. If you'd like a Pokemon to be done, make sure to comment on this video. Also, keep in mind that I keep track of the comments from all of my videos. So if you'd really like a Pokemon to be done, nothing is stopping you from commenting on multiple videos. If you have any suggestions for Pokemon, ways to improve my strategy, maybe even a way to improve the quality of my videos, feel free to let me know in the comments section below. My channel is always improving, and every video I plan to bring you even better content. Keep the suggestions coming, and I look forward to bringing you another video.